We are interrupting your local programming for some breaking news. Good afternoon, I'm Wesley Ogle. Dueling protesters have shut down NATO Parkway in downtown Portland. I'm Wesley Ogle. We do weather and traffic every 10 minutes here on K2. We are the only station that does that. That breaking news, Oregon Governor Kate Brown is holding a news conference about the wildfire emergency happening right now in our state. It was an overnight site that shocked the Pacific Northwest, a cluster of bright burning debris that soared through the sky at around nine o'clock last night. We have had a few drops of drizzle. Mike saw them yes. on his windshield this morning. He counted them for me. <laughs> yeah, what, like five or six? <laughs> Something like that, yes. But we are getting a look at the destruction that that fire caused as it tore through this community. Look at this home down to the rubble here. You can see the remnants of the family that lived here, children's toys. You can see a scooter here melted on the ground. You can even see the hoses that we imagine they used to try to save their home. And guys, what's remarkable is check out that wooden cross and the flags are still standing. I'm K2's Wesley Ogle live here in downtown Portland where crews are cleaning up the mess after police declared a riot here overnight. You can see there's a ton of graffiti. There's a lot of glass. They may not know how to put them on properly. So we've seen cars like this where there are just chains off of these tires. This nightmare is affecting our community and our colleagues here at K2. We've actually just learned that one of our friends who works on this show lost a lot this week. So trust me when I say that we are committed to being on your side and keeping you informed. It's a pretty interesting story. She was just totally ready to quit yes. and, and not do uh, gymnastics anymore. And then now look, she's heading to the Olympics. So. Dan, our newsroom was absolutely flooded with calls and emails about this. So I'll direct their most common question to you. What the heck was that? If 2020 wasn't weird enough, wait till you see some of the weird things that people try to pass through security at the airport. You really have to see this next one to believe it. Don't go away. <laughs> Oh. It's amazing! And hey, I'm about three feet off the ground now. Joel says I'm doing a real good job so far. Sing <laughs> us a song tonight. Yeah, and I'm not even scared having a bearded dragon this close to my throat. It's and totally fine. Never tried to shoot a basket in a home before, so this will be the first time. Oh, I'm so nervous. <laughs> Let's see. Oh! Oh! The bank is open. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not trying that one. <laughs> Can I move in now? Is this Absolutely. Mine? But I have to say, you guys, actually being made up and looking scary myself has given me a little bit of confidence. So, you know, these... Oh, okay, just kidding. <laughs> I'm K2's Wesley Ogle, live here at the scene of that deadly July 4th Heidi Manor apartment fire. You can see that the mobile command center is here in just over an hour. Investigators will start combing through the evidence to try to figure out how it happened. You can probably hear it and you can see it. This east wind is still so brutal. They just launched this new web page. You can look at it here at this map and then you can click on, you know, your area. So we're in the Milwaukee area and you can see that there are 73 crews out there working right this minute. Brian, this is so cool. You have never been able to drive through zoo lights, but this year you can. We're lucky in Oregon with easy access to the outdoors, but you don't have to go on an hours long adventure to feel the benefits. It can be as easy as going to your neighborhood park or taking your work call on a walk or a bike ride. It can even be as easy as opening a window. The news that I-84 westbound was back open slowly made its way through this massive truck parking lot in Hood River. We broke the news to Eric. So it's open from Hood River to Troutdale. Is it really? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful because we were we stuck out here for almost two days. And Thomas stuck here since Friday night. Well, westbound is back open. Really? Yes. Um, you didn't know that? No. Oh, no. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Oh, very, you know, I want to go home. <laughs> the first thing you're going to do when you get home? Uh, I give a hug with my son. <laughs> that hug now not far away thanks to the hard work of ODOT road crews. They brought in their biggest equipment from across the region to turn a road looking like this into this. It's interesting the contrast of these really big, loud, dirty semi trucks against this stunningly beautiful background here in Hood River. Yesterday morning, there were only a couple dozen trucks here in this parking lot. This morning, there are about 500 here. So how do you get hundreds of trucks out of here? So we kind of like sheep and we need a shepherd to get us out of here. Because if they leave it to us, 
It's going to be chaos. Maybe you could be the shepherd? Maybe I can. You know, I'll lead everybody out <laughs> the right way. Eric says the right way is one at a time. We watched semi after semi pretty easily make it onto the interstate. But not everybody. The truck going to move nowhere. Is so lucky. It's pretty bad here. Gene Ernest has been stuck in this spot since Saturday night. Are you a little nervous that you might block the other trucks from getting I out am, here? I am, I am. That's just like I, I, I cannot get any sleep and keep asking if they're ready to move and stuff, yeah. For tough jobs like that, Oh, don't turn, don't turn. Eric don't turn. became the shepherd. Come on. There goes your sheep. There goes my sheep, yeah. So we're going to be all right. In Hood River, Wesley Ogle. I turn out to be the shepherd. K2 News. <laughs> they are fast. They are fierce. They are female. Uh, I was promised that I could hit people and it would be legal. <laughs> This is the Fighting Shockwave, Portland's women's full contact football team. A lot of people kind of hear women's football and they're like, mm. but pound for pound, we hit just as hard as the guys do. More times than not, when people come out and watch us, after the game, they're like, wow, that was fun, that was good, and that was some real football. <laughs> Established in 2002, they play in a national league and they've been division champs. This season, their record was seven and one. I love to win. <laughs> I'd say I'm a good winner and an all right loser. It's Haley Petit's second season. She says, don't let the tough exteriors fool you. Take off the helmet and they're all big, warm and fuzzy. Oh, I think just once you get to know them, you realize that it's a big family. <laughs> And they want you to be part of that family. Tryouts are this Saturday. We have Division I collegiate athletes. We have people who've never played before. We have nurses. We have truck drivers. We have teachers. We have run-of-the-mill. Everybody, anybody that you can think of has played or is playing with us. And no experience is needed. There you go, pull. Pull. Nice. Seriously. You're going to take your left foot and you're going to step towards Jackie, cut okay. her in half, put your head on the ball, and drive. Like that? Yep. If I can do it. Oh gosh, I'm really scared to do this. So okay. is Jackie, it's fine. All right, sorry Jackie. You can do it. Oh. <laughs> nice job. I hit her! Okay, I'm ready. Set, go. In Southeast Portland, Wesley Ogle. Yeah! K2 News. Touchdown! As they trickle into Westminster Presbyterian Church, some catch up. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, did you get the email that I sent out? Others talk business, some study, and others revise. How are you doing? Good. It's a warm, loving welcome. Another harmonious Monday night in store. Four decades ago, this was all very new. A little bit of progress at a time. It's the power of music. I mean, the power of music is, would make a difference. This is the Portland Gay Men's Chorus. They're kicking off a very special season, celebrating 40 years. Gary Coleman helped start the group with an ad in a newsletter. Then um, about a dozen people showed up the first night at a rehearsal, and the rest is history. And they've made history, singing at the first gay games in 1982. The first LGBT chorus to sing at an inaugural event of a major elected official. And most recently, a landmark trip to a slowly more inclusive China. But it hasn't all been high notes. Over the years, the chorus lost at least 155 members to the AIDS epidemic. So that was you know, a lot of caretaking going on, a lot of singing at memorial services. Though they lost so many voices, they were still heard. Doing outreach concerts in small and rural towns around the state, Gary remembers one moment with protesters in Coos Bay. We were in a bleachers kind of situation, and they were in the back holding their signs, and they, they gradually put them down. Some began to cry, some began to leave, some thanked us at the end, and it just made a huge difference. The chorus didn't just change public perception, it changed too. What am I doing here? I'm, I'm not. I'm not gay, I'm not a man. 
Despite the title, 25% of PGMC members aren't gay or men. Come on, come on, come on. This is Drew Van Hangel's first year. I knew that that choice of joining the course was so right for me. I felt really included and welcome on the first day of my rehearsal. Others, years in, have learned to find their voice. No, I have terrible stage fright, so I don't like singing <laughs> in public. Ricky Armendariz never sang in front of people. Now, sing, sing no He's the chorus president, starting his 10th season, committed to continuing PGMC's mission. I want to see us reach uh, more underrepresented groups to really uh, raise up their voices and advocate for them as an arts organization within Portland. Because there's still a lot of work to be done. And what better way to do it than in harmony? The music goes past just the ear. It's really a, a body experience that really touches people's hearts. I just feel so grateful that I get to be a part of that.